It is freezing. Blizzard coming into Northern Illinois today. Hey, you ever been stuck on the side of the road, seen a car stuck on the side of the road, broke down in bad weather? Well, we're gonna do a little video on that right now. On days like this, when things are not the way you want them, we're gonna talk a little bit briefly about some stuff that I think you should have in your vehicle. So we're gonna dig in to the bed of my truck and I'm just gonna show you some of the things that I always have with me uh, for these types of conditions. This is not about everything I keep in my truck, it's just about stuff for dealing with winter weather. So I'm gonna hop in the truck and I'm just gonna show you a few things uh, that I think are worth having. Now, depending on where you live, like if you live in the snow belt around the Great Lakes, uh, in uh, a mountainous region, you might have a different set of uh, tools and criteria. Just like if you live in the desert or a coastal region uh, that's got lots of rain or prone to flooding. These things are pretty uh, amazing and easy to find now. A couple different companies making these. These are traction plates. If you're going to buy them, don't go cheap. There are companies that sell these for 20, 30, 50 dollars. They're going to break when you put your vehicle on them. So in a snowy or muddy condition, these things might be the difference between you getting out or not. And for 100 or 200 dollars, uh, I think it's a no brainer if you are in an area that you might slide off the road or get stuck going to hunt and camp, et cetera. And I've used stuff like this helping other people get out. I just spent a couple days trying to find a made in the USA shovel. The best I could do was assembled in the USA, which pisses me off. But anyway, thank you Seymour. Uh, I bought this from the local farm store. And this is the perfect size for me. We just downsized to a shorter bed, so I ended up grabbing a shorter shovel for this video. But these are perfect. Mud or snow, clearing your way out of a ditch, a D-handle, square shovel like this, you can do a lot of good work with. And also, if it's a sturdy enough shovel, this can become a tool for breaking glass, helping somebody get out of a, a vehicle. We've done videos on that before, but as far as I'm concerned, if you're gonna get stuck, you need something to be able to move snow or mud with. And a good D-handled shovel is, is it for me. And again, if it's a quality shovel, that thing could be used as a striking implement, pounding a stake in, something like that. Don't, don't chintz out on, on tools. Uh, what else do we have in here? I just picked up one of these so that I could show you the wrapper. So this is just a toe strap. Uh, and there's a lot of different stuff out there. This is from a hardware store, nothing fancy. But what I want you to look at when you think about this stuff is the difference between working limits and braking strength. Guys will say 30,000 pound brake strength, 10,000 pound loads. Uh, ladders, things like, I just grabbed this too because it still had a tag on it, a shackle understand the difference between working load limits and braking strength. So this shackle, you would use this to connect chains or straps or something of that nature to the vehicle. Think about what you might be towing and purchase quality stuff that's got working load limits inside the range that you're gonna be working with. So for me, I've always got a few straps. So this is a, a high quality, uh, I think this one's 10.5 is the working load limit. This one I just bought is in here. And then in the box, in the bottom of this box, I've got some real chains. Now, bunch of discussion point on whether or not chains or straps. I'll use both, a combination of it. It depends on how deep you might be stuck. And I've used one of these. This is just a little simple come along. I have used one of these to extricate myself numerous times in my life when I've been uh, in bad positions. Uh, you're not gonna pull a semi truck, but you are gonna be able to put enough tension onto your vehicle to help slowly move you out of a sticky situation. So between chains and straps, and some shackles, you can connect up to your vehicle and get some stuff done. I've always got a good ax with me. If you see the video that we did on ax sharpening, this is the one that I cut my hand open with quite badly. But a good ax like this, we just finished up a video on making a fire starter. This is a good way to get some of the, the implements that you needed or might need to build that fire. 
a cheap handsaw. Why do I need this? Uh, for a lot of reasons. I have definitely used an ax or a saw like this to chop up some stuff out of the forest to use to create traction under my vehicle or another, or again, back to fire making. So I've got some, some simple equipment like that in the vehicle at all times. Also, something like this, 20, 30 bucks. Uh, for years, I have kept one of these in the truck and super simple, magnetic. Let's see if I can get it to change. There we go. Different strobes. One, it's a beacon. Hey, I'm here if somebody's trying to find you, but also please don't run me over on the side of the road. It's amazing how bright something like this can be on a dark and stormy night. 20, 30 bucks. I've got one inside the truck that plugs into 12 volt, and this is something you could go stick onto the vehicle that you were helping as well to be seen. Also something that I've always got in here, as you have seen in some of our other truck videos, a decent fire extinguisher. Goes without saying why you might need that. A few more nuts and bolts. Basic rain gear. If I'm out in the elements, getting wet can be your death. I've got a uh, set of some small, simple tools. So you'll notice a theme with me, multiple items. Map gas. If you can't make a fire with map gas, you ain't getting a fire going at all. I always keep something like that with me. I did a whole video on the stuff we carry in the truck, so I don't wanna get redundant on that, but a good pair of heavy gloves. Tire puncture kit, tire puncture kit. I always keep a loose roll of uh, some garbage bags. I can make a poncho out of this. I can keep somebody else dry. I can maybe uh, make a temporary shelter with this. There's quite a bit that you can do with this. I've got even more fire making materials here. Multiple ratchet straps, tons of stuff that you can do with this uh, from retarping or re-securing a load to maybe actually having to use these to help pull something like a snowmobile or a smaller, uh, a smaller vehicle out of a bad sticky situation. Some caution tape, uh, not just for the obvious reasons of alerting others to you maybe working, but also to help for maybe leaving a trail coming in or out of the woods, depending on where you're at, so that people can find you or you can find uh, your way in or out. Some roadside flares. Again, another fire making tool if I need it, but also the obvious of being seen. I've got jumper cables in here. I've got some bungee cords in here. I've got some things like duct tape in here. And I've got a host of other tools, ratchets, sockets, things of that nature, uh, air inflator. And then we're not even going into things like medical equipment. One other tool that I often show people that I carry in the truck is this. Uh, once upon a time, I helped a woman get out of a burning vehicle and I used a hammer to break the window, not the one next to her, but one behind her. All the doors were, were banged up shut, so we had to break glass and something like this would have come in handy. So a tool like this can be used to break glass, pry open a door, etc., cetera, uh, if needed. So I always keep a heavy pry tool in the car. But this one's about winter stuff. So have a means to extricate yourself from a ditch from the side of the road. Of course, keep your gas tank full. Uh, if I'm on a long road trip, we always keep two five gallon metal quality gas cans in the trailer with us. Shovel for moving snow, straps, things of that nature. I'm gonna show you a couple more things that I've got inside the truck. We'll come around this side. This is a super high quality. This is a made in the USA military surplus blanket. This one's almost all wool. I think they have some poly in there to make it non-flammable, but I got to be able to stay warm if I get stuck or broke down on the side of the road. I am driving a Ford though, so I'm probably going to get home. I love messing with you guys. A few bits and pieces like some extra clothing, right? Scarf, gloves, hat, and the like. Don't skimp. Get a good one. This brand, NOCO or NOCO, however you say it, they don't pay me, not endorsed by them. I buy them because they're a good product. You don't have a vehicle to jump you. You can have cables, but you need somebody to jump you. These things will work just fine in a pinch. Make sure that you order one or purchase one big enough for your vehicle. For example, this one's 2000 amps. If you get one that's uh, 800 amps, let's say, and you've got a big diesel truck, it's probably not going to be powerful enough to crank that big engine over. So get one big enough for your vehicle. 
I've also used these even when I've had a vehicle to jump because uh, maybe I couldn't get my vehicle up close enough to use cables. So they work when you've got access issues. That adds another two points. Check the connections on your batteries. Make sure that those terminals are tight and clean. And then remember, batteries in our vehicles don't last forever. Most people don't know that they need a new battery until their battery's dead and then they're stranded somewhere and they tell the mechanic it was working just fine. Everything works just fine until it doesn't. They're perishable. Don't wait till the battery craps out to get a new one. Just think about what might you need if you end up in a shitty situation on the side of the road. What might you wish that you had? And you gotta think reasonably, right? Because you can overpack, you can take way too much stuff and just be burning all your fuel, hauling everything in your garage around. Be reasonable, think what do I have to have to get me home? Inventory it, make sure that you have it so that if you need it, it's there. Keep your battery charged, keep your fluids topped off, keep your vehicle in good condition. I know tires are expensive, but make sure you've got good tires on your vehicle. Do you have a spare? Is your spare topped off with air and ready to go? Do you have a jack? Do you have the correct tire iron? Think about all the stuff that you might need. Make sure you have it. Check your wife's car, check your kids' cars, teach everybody how to use the shit, be safe, get home, help other people if they need it. Don't be dickheads. Drive safe this winter. Love you. You'd think if I was showing you a book, I'd get a brand new, non-dog-eared copy. This is my copy, and the reason it's dog-eared is this thing rides behind my passenger truck seat, and I reach back there at gas stations on my trips around the country, and I read up. This is from my friends at concealedcarry.com, and it is the Legal Boundaries by State, the travel guide for American gun owners. And one of the reasons that I like this book is it's not produced by an organization that is selling you something. Yes, you gotta pay for the book, but they're not selling you some big crappy service like some of the Some of the people involved with the Concealed Carry Inc. crew are some top level legal defense people. It's a super easy to read format. For example, I can come here to the page on Ohio and it's just a quick overview of things like open carry, firearms at colleges, Firearms at K-12 schools, firearms at churches, firearms at hotels. Is it a constitutional carry state? Yes, no. Any magazine restrictions? Super simple stuff. Contact information to the attorney general for the state and a bunch of other really easy to digest information. Concealedcarry.com to get this and the free app. Love it. I'm so sick of apps.